how many of you get halfway through the day and realize that you haven't stood up for your desk? <laughs> <laughs> Me too, 100% guilty. But as we enter the fourth quarter, it's so important that we actively remember to get up and move at some point in the day. My name is Elizabeth Harris, and I'm a member of Chicago Central Team 4. And Team 4, we are consistently helping other law firms, so our workload can be quite intense. And when the emails are coming in rapid fire, it's hard to feel like you can step away. But it's so important for both your physical and mental health to take a moment. Because if we're not taking care of ourselves, how in the world do we expect to take care of our customers? Over the next few moments, I want to take some time to go over the damage that we're doing to our body when we lead a sedentary life and sit for eight hours and some of the ways we can combat that in the office. Now, the handout has some of the risk and effects that we do to our body. And just, does anyone have any ideas of, of what we're doing when we sit for this long, the damage we're doing? Just some ideas. Poor spine. Yeah. 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 Breathing issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so consistently sitting throughout the day is raising your risk for heart disease, diabetes, obesity, depression, and not to mention all the funky stuff you're doing to your spine. So um, I want to draw your attention to the woman on the page. And I feel like you can hear her groaning <laughs> as the emails come in. And just like they tell you to smile when you answer the phone because the customer can hear that smile when you talk with them, I honestly think the same thing goes across in your emails. Mm -hmm. When you're hunched over and beaten down by the day, it's going to come across in the tone of your emails. And we all know that tone in emails can often be misread. So it's important to sit up straight and have a good energy and a positive energy when you're writing out those emails to customers. Now notice how her head and her neck are jutting out towards the screen. This is something becoming more common, especially in my generation, with tablets and iPhones and computers. You're, you're doing that motion with your neck and it is so bad for your spine and the muscles surrounding. It's extending muscles in your neck that should really be in a smaller state and it leads to those tension headaches that come in the middle of the day. So chiropractors recommend doing chin tucks that you can do in your desk. Just when you feel like you need a break, back away from your desk and do a couple. All you have to do is tuck your chin, hold for five seconds, and release. Maybe do ten at a time, five at a time, however much you think you need. And as my chiropractor told me, as much as I hate it, make yourself have a double chin. <laughs> it's like double chin at the office, that is what you want when you're staring at a computer because it protects you and helps reverse that computer neck. Now moving down her spine, you can see that she's slumped over and not engaging her abs. She's got mushy abs. <laughs> <laughs> and when you're not using your abs when you're sitting, you're letting all of that pressure and all of that weight from that, your upper body just sit on your lower spine. So say hello to back tightness and lower back pain. And what they say is, in order to protect your back, you need to engage your front. And this is all actively reminding yourself to make these changes. We're always going to slump in this position because it's easy and we don't think about it. So you have to think and re-engage your body and remind yourself to sit up and engage your abs. And if you have a difficult time doing that, ask your manager for the exercise ball to sit on because that it's going to tell you to sit up straight, otherwise you're going to topple over off the ball. <laughs> now moving down your legs and your feet, the most important part of staying fit in the office. Dr. Jack Gropel, a sports scientist, has done many experiments over the past few years to see what the best method is for you to keep your body healthy and reverse some of the damages we do when we're sitting for eight hours. And he found that instead of doing the 30 minute walk before work or during your lunch, it's better to intersperse your activities throughout the day. So he thinks that the best way is to dedicate five minutes every hour to physical activity. 
and that seems like a lot when we're answering all these emails, but just getting up and moving more. If you have to go send an inner office email, instead of sending it, get up and walk to their desk. If you know that there's a bathroom on a different floor, or if there's one further away from your desk, walk to that one, or use the stairs at the office when you're coming up in the morning. I'm on the 17th floor, I will not do that. <laughs> if you're on in a smaller building, you can definitely do that, or take it to a floor closer to yours and walk from there. And you can be so creative with this, and it's a way of team bonding. We had a spontaneous stretch circle the other day, which ended in giggles, seeing our coworkers in very weird positions. <laughs> so after that, we went and sat back down at our desk, and we're still laughing from that experience, and it led to a better customer experience because we were in a better mood. And Dr. Gropel's experience, um, experiments have shown that when you do get up and move throughout the day, that it increases employees' energy, efficiency, and their engagement with their work. So by moving, we're being better employees for the company and in providing a better service to our customers. So when you hit that 2 p.m. slump, instead of going for coffee, go for a quick walk and then you won't have to worry about not being able to sleep later at night because you had coffee at 2 p.m. <laughs> so when you go back to your offices on Monday, I challenge you to be the motivators for your team. Get people moving, get people excited to move, maybe do a team challenge where whoever gets the most steps that week gets a free hour to use how they want the following. So take care of yourself so we can take care of our customers. Any questions? Yeah. What is your favorite like activity to get you moving if, when you find yourself sitting too much? Stretching. Um, there's a three minute yoga you can do from your seat um, or just getting up and doing strange stretchings. Like I have no shame <laughs> in all of this <laughs> with standing up and doing lunges and <laughs> stretching out my arms in the middle of my desk. That's I because I feel very tight if I sit for too long. So my main thing is, is stretching. So anything else? Thank you. <laughs>